the big picture. I want to talk about your life as a whole. The ups and downs that you go through on a regular basis. You know, sometimes we measure things of the moment. We kind of take a snapshot where we're at and we kind of somehow measure everything of what we're going through at that cycle in our life. But it's wise to take a look at the big picture, the totalness of your life. Sure, we may go through some difficult things and it may be hard at times for us to uh, understand what's going on. Sure, we may go through some things that have a hard time giving definition to it. But it's so important if you're going to last. It's so important if you're going to somehow stay encouraged. you got to look at the big picture. We're looking at, of course, an illustration of Babe Ruth. Some of you may know of him. He's known as the what? The, the, the king of home runs. One that many times would hit it out of the park in Yankee Stadium. Played for around five, six seasons, first five years in, in New Jersey. But many times he struck out. As a matter of fact, he struck out. 1,330 times. Did you know Babe Ruth was up to bat? 8,399 times. Babe Ruth came to the home plate, came up to bat over 8,000 times. But he's known as the home run king. But did you know he only got 714 home runs? Now, only. Now, that's a lot. As a matter of fact, that's, I believe that's the third, uh, he holds the third uh, uh, title to that in third place. But what about our life? Many times, you know what defines us? Is the strikeouts, the losses, the things we go through. Babe Ruth was one that was up to bat over 8,000 times. But he struck out 1,330 times. You would think after one or two of the strikeouts. You would think of within a game. You would think of when he walked up to the home plate. You would think after striking out that time, the next time up in, let's say, the fourth inning, he would say, well, you know, I struck out in the first inning. You know, the second inning, I struck out too. You know, I really can't walk up to this plate again because I may strike out. No. He went up to bat over 8,000 times. As a matter of fact, 8,399. I'm asking you. Many times we say to stay in the game. Here's what I'm asking you. Are you willing to go up to bat again? Are you willing to somehow even know things have, may not have worked out for you? You may have struck out. Things may have not have gone your way. Are you willing to take another swing at it again? Listen, friends. Do not allow yesterday's mistake to define you. Do not allow yesterday's tragedy to define your whole life. You see, the enemy wants to define what you're going through. The enemy wants to define your life of that thing, that thing that happened to you. But see, your life is bigger than that. Your life is more complete than that. I remember one time going through a period of loss in my life and I was talking to my dad and on the phone and I said, wow, you know, dad, I really lost here. You know, I lost. And he, many times he, he don't uh, say these things, but this time, you know what he said? Because he sensed that I was in a, a down mood. He says, yeah, but John, you got to look at the big picture. You've won much more than you've lost. That's what I want to say to you this morning. You have won much more than you lost. But the enemy would sit here, this, as you're sitting here, would like you to be defined by that thing that you went through. Friend, you do not have to be defined by that thing you went through. You need to be defined by what God is doing in your life in the big picture. Don't stop there at that defeat. Now, where's our scripture? Where are we going with this? Matthew chapter 13, verses 3. We could read it here, verses 3 through 8. It says this, Then he told them many things in parables. 
Jesus was speaking in parables. He was teaching them on life. And he says, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. The birds came up and they ate it. Verse 5 says this, some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. Verse 6, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Verse 8, our final verse, still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times of what was sown. Wow. Now, where does this fit in our life today? What are we talking about here this morning? You know, it says a farmer went out to sow a seed. We're kind of looking at this and we're putting our, injecting ourselves in here and saying, we're like a farmer. We were born into this world. We were born into our life. This is our life. The life you have, that's your life. And what are you doing? You're living it every day. Every day you wake up, you're living your life. It's another day. You're going out as a farmer and you're sowing into that day. It says here, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And here's what you're doing. You're going out on a regular basis and you're living your life. You're going out on a regular basis and you're sowing your life. That goes on. As he was scattering. What do you mean? As he was living life. As he was doing what God called him to do. As he was living life, it says, some fell along the path and the birds came up and ate it up. What do you mean? Many times our life is defined by what we're doing. And here it measures this life in a kind of like four different categories. It measures it into, into uh, uh, a scattering of a path. And it gives four different kind of breakdowns of the person's life, the farmer's life. As a matter of fact, it says some along the path. It says some along uh, 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 plants and some on good soil. But what about your life on a regular basis? What about the things you go through on a regular basis? Sometimes you're spending your life. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we spend ourselves. We're being spent. You're spending your life on a regular basis. What we're trying to do this morning is take a look at the big picture. You are living your life. The enemy wants you to define your life about that situation. God wants you to look at the big picture and see that he is the master plan of your life. He knows what he's doing. Did you hear what Joel said this morning? He said that God, in a moment's time, God can bless you, give you back in a moment's time everything that has gone wrong for you. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to look at the end. In the end, it was the good soil. You know what? There's four different compartments here. It was four different types of soil. Did you know that there was three failures? It was here, it was some fell along the path, the birds ate it up. It says, uh, verse 5, uh, uh, rocky places. It wasn't until the fourth one, that took root. Here's what I want to say. You may have lost three times, but the fourth time, listen, all you got to do is win that fourth time and it makes up for all the rest. Listen, friend, you do not have to have everything going right for you every day for you to win in life. You don't have to have everything working out for you every day. Listen, we're, we, we're living in a culture. We're living in a culture where we wake up, we think everything has to go right every day or we get discouraged. We, we think that, wow, if, if my car acts up, if that job don't work out at that particular time, if that business deal won't work out, my life's ruined. Or if I don't get that boyfriend or that girlfriend, it's not going to work out. God looks at the big picture and it goes on. Let's stick with the story. As he was scattering, you're scattering every day. You're going to work. You're spending your life. And you only have so much of life. So much of seed. There's only so much of life in your pockets. There's only so much seed. And it's talking about the farmer. You're the farmer this morning. You're spending your life. You're the one that's going out and living life. As a matter of fact, it says is that you went out. You've been born into this world. And it says here that the birds came up and ate it. What can we say about the things that you've lost that were stolen from you? 
What can we say about those things that some outside force came and snatched some things away? You see, the seed was not meant to be eaten up by the birds. Oh, we're thankful that the birds got, got something, I guess. But that seed was your life. That seed was yours. And it, it fell along the way. You didn't mean to have it fall there, I guess. Matter of fact, maybe you couldn't even tell the difference of what was good and what was bad. It just happened. Sometimes things happen in life. They have a way of bringing you down. We're looking at these four stations of life, if you will. We're looking at these four things that we're kind of identifying with our life. And we're saying at the conclusion of it, everything really don't have to work out all the way for me in my favor. As a matter of fact, if just one thing works out, that can take care of the whole rest. I want to encourage you that God knows what he's doing in your life. Stay in the game. Keep coming up to bat. That 8,000 times you might have struck out last time, keep walking up out of that dugout and getting back up to bat. If you do, you never know when that home run is going to come. You know, aside because I had to do a little study about Babe Ruth, didn't know a lot about him other than the Babe Ruth chocolate bar. I knew about that. Knew, uh, knew a little bit about him, of course. But you know, you know uh, he, he had a, a, a tough life. But did you know it would be so easy for him to somehow, to, to not allow the things and not keep going up to bat. Did you know that Babe Ruth holds the second in the list of RBIs? Now, what's an RBI? Runs bad in. Did you know that he had over 2,300 RBIs? Did you know, a matter of fact, let me get it right here. He was on base 2,062 times. Listen. It don't always got to be a home run, but if you get on base, you know, listen, at the end of the day, if you make it home, that's not a bad statistic, is it, friend? And some of you are defining the things about, well, are you going to get that home run that time? Did you know one of the hidden stats about Babe Ruth is that he had 2,213 RBIs? Now, listen, you're looking at that. We're going to get back to the scripture. You're looking at that situation that failed in your life. You're looking at that thing that happened to you and saying, that only happened to a negative to me. I remember you, I say it about every week in every sermon, I, 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 a message. I, I, I remember when leaving Hawaii, I felt like a failure. That thing I was going through, it, it seemed like nothing good was coming out of it. But did you know I failed to tell you in, in any of the illustrations I give you? The person that, that is now in charge of the, uh, the Teen Challenge in Hawaii was a student in our program that we trained. You know, it's, it's some, the, the person who's running it today is someone that came to us as a, as a, a meth addict, losing his family, nothing good coming out of it. And did you know today he's the one in charge of Oahu? And you know, when I give my illustrations, I talk about the bottom falling out, this and that. But the story goes is at the end of the day, something good came out of it. That's an RBI. What thing has happened to you that maybe you had to go back, you hit it in a pop fly, and it didn't go over the fence. Babe Ruth hit many pop flies that did not go over the fence. As a matter of fact, they, 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 here's the wall, here's the wall. It was just shy of the wall. And, but did you know what? There was someone on third base. There was someone on second base. And it's that person that kept them going around the bases. I want to encourage you. That failure in your life, you are defining it as a failure. But someone came home because of it. Some blessing came out of it. You do not know today what, what happened. You're looking through a glass darkly. You're looking at it as a failure. You're walking back to the dugout. I didn't get a home run. I was a failure. And you're sitting down again. But the thing is, you've gotten one for the team. You've gotten one for heaven. You've gotten one in the books of life. Listen. In God, nothing is wasted in your life. In God, it all has purposes. In God, you're spending your life. You're going out on a regular basis. You're working hard. You're doing what you do to do. Yo, you mess up. You make mistakes. You, you drop some seed because it was in your you know, pocket. You drop some in the wrong place. And you, you spent your life in the wrong place. As a matter of fact, and it goes here. And some birds came up and stole it from you. Some outside force somehow stole something from you. And when you look at that, that's something that 
brings harm to you. They've taken it from you. They've stolen some something from you. What can we say about those things where outside forces have kind of ruined your life, took your life? But you know, they didn't ruin your life. Let's continue on. Some fell. And you know, that's what it is. It falls. Let me just say as a no, Jesus said, lest a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it only remains a kernel of wheat. Listen, at the end, as we go through these things, did you know even in death, there's life? Even in the death of that thing, something good comes out of it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly. Oh, I know that relationship. You thought it had promise. You thought that it was going to work out, last forever. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came, the plants were scorched and they were withered because there was no root. Oh, I know many times a relationship that goes south, you would say, what good came out of it? It only lasted five years, you say. And it, as you look at your life this morning, you would get a little discouraged. You would see a family intact, and you would say, why can't I have that family? It sprang up. There was promise. There was good things. You were living your life in that job or whatever it may be that you're dealing with this morning that's running through your mind. And it sprang up. There was promise. It, it came up, but then problems came. It says here that uh, some fell in the soil, but when the sun came up, the sun came up. It, the, it was growing. You were living life. You, you spent your life. You were living life, but the outside trials, adversaries, the sun came up at midday, and it kind of overpowered you. You wish this morning it wouldn't have, but it did. It happened. And you're here this morning, you're, you're trying to put definition to it. You're trying to somehow take a look at the big picture. It happened in your life. The sun came up, trials happen, trouble happens. Jesus says this very clear. In this life, you will have trouble. That's what Jesus said. Jesus says, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have hardships. Jesus says, you are going to have difficulty. And difficulties arise in your life. You don't like it. None of us like it. Things were going all right on Monday until you got that phone call. Things were going all right until you got that doctor's report. Trials come up. And it says the plants were scorched. It kind of put an end to your dream of that moment. But the thing is, it's of that moment. Don't be defined upon this stage or what you're going through. Don't be defined if, if you're fine, wilting. Don't be defined if trials at that moment and it begins to die, that thing begins to die and withered because they had no root. You would define that relationship, oh, what good came out of that relationship? Two great kids, how's that? Two kids, what are you, what are you talking about, pastor? Sometimes we, we define situations as, oh, that marriage broke up. But listen, you got two beautiful kids, you can give God thanks for that. Or something, oh, what good came out of it? I don't know. It, it's a part of the package. It's a part of your life. I'm asking you to take a good look at the big picture this morning. You say, but it didn't last. I understand. Really, nothing lasts in this life. We're, we're just passing through, the Bible says. We're sojourners in this life. And I'm not making reference. I'm just trying to somehow get you to look at the big picture. I'm somehow trying to get you to look at the way God sees it here but when the sun came up, and none of us like the sun coming up and raining on our prey, scorching the good things in life. Oh, we wish that seed would have fell on some deeper ground. We wish that it wouldn't have been this way, but it happened. It's there, and you're dealing with it this morning. But here, listen, other seed fell among thorns. What can we say about this? The other seed, oh, it fell among thorns. None of us want something to be wasted. None of us want something to be choked out. Oh, this, this patch of life seemed like there was nothing good came out of it. Nothing good came out of these. It grew and the thorn just devastated it right away. It got the best of it. And it seemed like there was no fruit. We all have things in our life where there's just literally no fruit. We've had jobs that way. We have seri periods of times of three months, three years. We have, where it just seemed like no fruit was coming out of that period. But listen, still other seed fell. Oh, we could be thankful that there's still other seed falling. That there's still other seed. Listen, it's not all negative in your life. Some fell here 
that might not have worked out. Some fell here that might not have worked out. Oh, we don't like it that some fell here and it wasn't fruitful. But here's what I want to talk to the believers this morning. Here's what I want to talk to the child of God. There is some life that you're living today that's being spent on the kingdom of God or you wouldn't be here this morning. There's some life that you're spending. Oh, you spent some life here that wasn't the best, but something good came out of it. Lest a kernel of wheat falls to the ground that died, but it really didn't die. It really didn't die. It's a harvest that's in the ground. Even all these things we're talking about. Death, there's victory in death. Jesus on the cross taught us that. Even in death, there's victory. So those three seeds has its place in our life. But here, but still some other seed fell on good soil. What are we talking about this morning, Pastor? We're talking about your life in Christ. We're talking about you praying that prayer this morning. You've sowed some seed in, the seed in the kingdom of God. You're talking about you praying a prayer. What do you mean? The good soil now is your relationship with Jesus. The good soil we're talking about is that spiritual life within you. Let me be frank with you. The only good thing, the only good thing you got going is your walk with Christ. Let me tell you something. All the other things are okay. They're all good. But you know what? Let me tell you what's really going to be fruitful in your life. It's going to be you and God together. The only thing at the end of the day that's going to work for you is your relationship. At the end of the day, when you're laying on that hospital bed, it's going to be Jesus that takes you home. At the end of the day, it's going to be you and the Father together. Let me tell you something. This, this spiritual thing we're talking about, this other seed that fell on good soil, Jesus is the good soil in your life. Jesus is the good soil. And the enemy would try to rain on your life. The enemy would try to rain on your parade and say, but you lost it there. You lost it here. What good came out of 1978 to 1982? What good came out of this portion, this season of your life? You're saying because you're mumbling a little bit, you don't know, but you're getting a little encouraged that in death, there is life in Jesus Christ. But at the end of the day, your life in Christ is producing a fruit. Amen. Here's what I want to say. At the end of the day, my brother, my sister, this produced all the hurt and pain multiple times over. Amen. The hundred, sixty, and 30 times. What do you mean? Some seed that you've sown in the kingdom. What do you mean I sown? Praying a prayer to Jesus is sowing into the kingdom. A good work. Jesus says if you've given a cup of cold water to Lisa, that's sowing into the kingdom. Visiting that one in the prison, that's sowing into the kingdom. Writing a letter to that person. Giving, giving your life to that person. Listen. A hundred, sixty, or thirty. Some seed that you've sown in Christ is going to produce a hundredfold. There's some that's going to produce 60 and 30. At the end of the day, this blessing is going to be greater than all the failure that you've ever experienced. Babe Ruth, listen, Babe Ruth is known as the home run king. That's what we know him as. He's not known as the strike, st the one that strike out more times. Unless you that cover the stats. I didn't know that. I knew it a little bit. But, but listen, he, he struck out over twice as many times that he got home runs. But he goes down in history as the one that would have a power shot over that fence. Stay in the game. They haven't written the last story about you yet. You need to put your foot forward. You need to get up every day in Jesus Christ in righteousness. Now, listen, don't contaminate this soil. Keep this soil pure. Keep that clean. That's in Christ. That's the only thing that's working for you. That's the only thing that's really producing any fruit in your life. The only thing that's really working for you is you give your life to Christ. That's affecting everything else in your life. It's, it's, it's permeating everything else that's working for you in your life. Now, keep that pure. Don't put any bad fertilizer in there. Don't put anything bad that's going to ruin it. Don't put anything bad that's going to kind of cause it to stifle that to be 20 or 10 or 5. God is on your side. God is fighting your battles. God knows what he's doing in your life. Could you please this morning look at your life in the big picture? 
I know you may have had a few years of failure. And I don't even think about that. But when I think about, you know, I look back and those years, I'm thinking, wow, I had four years. It seems like it sprang up. Great things were happening. But as quick as it sprang, you know, the ministry there in Hawaii, it, it, it kind of seemed like my portion of it died. So I would be in the third camp there if I would put that situation. I would probably be in that camp. But did you know at the end of the day, there was victory in death because there was an RBI. There was someone that, is that, that we trained, that we discipled. If we weren't there, now everything he is doing, we get credited for. Listen, that death thing that you think nothing good came out of it, you don't know about the next generation. What good came out of that relationship? You got two kids. You're, you don't know what's going to come out of that next generation. You don't know what's going to happen down the road. That's why you got to look at, look at the big picture. You say, whoa, there was only death there. God looks at the big picture in your life. Now, what am I saying as I wrap this up? Keep going for God. Keep sowing in for Him. The only thing really worth living for, and I know that it's hard to say, you know, listen, the only thing really you got going for you is Jesus. Put your, put your work in Jesus. You say, oh, but I do this job. I know, do that job. I do that, but do it in the name of Jesus. As you get up in the morning, say, God, I'm in your hands. You're adding to this thing. You're adding to the thing that's working in your life. Friend, let me tell you something. This is working in your life. This is producing something. Do not think that if it's in the ground, you don't see it coming up. Friend, it's good soil. You got some good things going on. It's going to overtake everything else in due time. I'm encouraging you to grab, to grab it. He struck out there. And I'm closing with this. He struck out there. Ooh, the ball really went by me right there. Whoa, that's Babe Ruth. Whoa, that was a fast one. Oh, but he has to, in the third inning, he has to do it all over again. Oh, which bat, Lord? Which bat am I going to get up? And some of you are saying, how am I going to do it, Lord? God, give me the wisdom to pick out the right bat. God, give me the wisdom how to go in that office and talk to an employer. God, give me the wisdom how to do that. And you pick up that bat. And it's hard for you to approach home base again because you just struck out last time. But God's going to give you the grace to get up and get back in the game and get up in the home base. And then, here's, listen, listen, here's what's going to happen. The next one, you're going to be looking up in amazement and say, wow, God really did it. We're talking about 160, 30 times what was sown. And the blessing, it will be real in your life. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. God, help your people. Sorry for getting a little excited, Lord. Lord, but your people need to see the big picture this morning. They need to see what you're doing in their life. Don't let them stop on that station of life that kind of had a defeat. Don't let them stop on the second. In the totality of it, something is working. Something good is coming out of that thing. Lord, we love you. We're sowing into you as we close. We've sown into you. We've received the word this morning. Our hearts, we've gotten the breakthrough. As a matter of fact, because we are here today, Thursday, that thing has a breakthrough in our future. Because we've sown into it. Because we prayed a prayer. Because we didn't. Go the way that there is something that you're bringing out of that thing. Help your people, I pray. We love you. We thank you as you're closing your eyes. You'd say, hey, pastor, I need Jesus.